Welcome to Vet Image Lab. In part three of our echocardiographic series on feline HCM, we'll focus on left atrial enlargement and two major complications of advanced HCM, thromboembolism and congestive heart failure. If you haven't watched the first two parts yet, I highly recommend doing so before continuing. In part one, we reviewed the definition of HCM and how to determine LV hypertrophy. In part two, we discuss different LV hypertrophy patterns and dynamic LVOT obstruction, including SAM. It will greatly help your understanding of today's content. Now let's move on to the third evaluation factor in evaluating cats with HCM, left atrial size. Left atrial enlargement is one of the most important markers of disease severity and progression in HCM. As diastolic dysfunction worsens, Elevated filling pressures lead to volume overload and stretching of the left atrium over time. In addition, mitral regurgitation caused by SAM can further contribute to atrial enlargement. The most widely recommended method for assessing left atrial size is the LA to AO ratio. It is measured from the right parasternal short axis view at the level of the aortic valve. Make sure to include the left auricle in the view as a useful landmark and if possible, exclude the pulmonary veins to avoid overestimation. For accurate measurement, we assess the left atrial diameter at its largest size, either visually or at the beginning of electrical diastole. We can also use direct linear measurements of the left atrial diameter as a supplemental method to assess left atrial enlargement. This is typically done on a right parasternal long axis four chamber view by measuring from the interatrial septum to the left atrium free wall at end systole when the left atrium is maximally distended. This absolute value can be helpful, especially when the aortic root is not well visualized, or when the LA to IO ratio might be unreliable due to image quality or anatomy. In general, normal LA size is less than 10 millimeters, and LA to IO ratio should be less than 1.5. When the ratio reaches 1.5 or higher, we consider it abnormal, indicating left atrial enlargement. Once the LA to AO ratio exceeds 1.6, the risk of congestive heart failure or arterial thromboembolism starts to increase, and if the ratio reaches 1.8 or higher, the risk becomes even higher. Here's an example of a cat with significant left atrial enlargement. As you can see, the LA to AO ratio is 2.99 clearly indicating severe left atrial enlargement with a very high risk of congestive heart failure and arterial thromboembolism. Let's now move on to how to evaluate left atrial systolic function, which reflects the contractile performance of the LA and may indicate disease severity in HCM. We can assess LA systolic function using both 2D and M-mode methods. One of the main 2D methods is the calculation of LA ejection fraction. It represents the percentage change in LA volume between maximum and minimum filling. This is typically calculated using the single plane modified Simpsons method based on right parasternal long axis images. The normal LA EF percent in cats is around 60 to 70 percent. A reduced value may suggest impaired LA contractile function, which is often seen in cats with advanced HCM. The second method is the LA fractional shortening. This is performed using M-mode in a short axis view at the level of the aortic valve and the left atrium. We measure the maximum and minimum diameter of the left atrium during the cardiac cycle. Then, LA fractional shortening is calculated to reflect the systolic contractility of the atrial wall. Normal values are between 28 and 45%. A value less than 20% is considered systolic dysfunction. Cats with HCM typically show lower values due to atrial remodeling. It's important to assess not only the left atrium, but also the left auricle, because as left atrial enlargement progresses, the auricle often becomes enlarged as well. You can see here a markedly enlarged left auricle alongside the dilated left atrium. When the left atrium and auricle become markedly enlarged, the risk of blood stasis increases. In these situations, we may observe spontaneous echo contrast, often referred to as smoke on echocardiography. You can see in these images the swirling, smoke-like appearance within the left atrial cavity, 
and auricle. This appearance reflects very slow, stagnant blood flow, which is strongly associated with an increased risk for thrombus formation. Now, let's look at an example of intracardiac thrombus. In this case, you can clearly see a distinct echogenic mass within the right atrium. A thrombus typically shows a well-defined solid appearance. Once a thrombus forms, it can dislodge and travel through the systemic circulation. One of the most critical sites for thromboembolism is the terminal aorta, where the saddle thrombus may lodge at the aortic bifurcation. On the left, you see a normal aorta filling with clear laminar flow, extending into both external iliac arteries. On the right, the flow is disrupted with turbulent signals. It indicates an obstructive saddle thrombus at the bifurcation. This condition leads to acute hindlimb paresis, pain, and frequently poor prognosis in cats with HCM. Let's take a look at the terminal aorta in a cat with suspected thromboembolism. On the left, a thrombus appears as a hyperechoic structure within the vessel lumen at the aortic bifurcation. It's located right where the aorta splits into the external iliac arteries. On the right, the color Doppler shows a filling defect, a clear absence of color flow at the site of the thrombus. This combination of direct thrombus visualization and abnormal Doppler flow is highly suggestive of a saddle thrombus, which is one of the most serious complications of advanced HCM in cats. To evaluate the risk of thrombus formation in cats with HCM, we often assess the left atrial appendage, or LAA, flow velocity. The left atrial appendage, also commonly referred to as the left auricle, a small outpouching of the left atrium, where blood flow can become stagnant. In cats with HCM, Flow within the LAA can be very slow, and this blood stasis may lead to spontaneous echo contrast or even clot formation. That's why measuring LAA flow velocity is helpful in assessing the risk of thromboembolism in feline patients with cardiomyopathy. Maximum velocity of LAA is measured using pulsed wave Doppler at the entrance of the left auricle you can use an oblique right parasternal or left apical view, depending on the cat's conformation and image quality. We typically observe two waves, one during ventricular systole and one during atrial contraction. A maximum velocity of LAA less than 0.20 meters per second is highly specific for the presence of spontaneous echo contrast or thrombus. A threshold of 0.25 meters per second is more sensitive. These values are not used alone. We interpret them together with LA size and visual findings such as spontaneous echo contrast. Let's see some cases with HCM. In this case, the LAA max is over 0.3 meters per second. This is within the normal range, and there's no spontaneous echo contrast observed. In contrast, the second case shows severely reduced flow, around 0.15 to 0.18 meters per second, and spontaneous echo contrast is clearly visible. This cat is at high risk for thromboembolism. Finally, we should check the evidence of congestive heart failure. Thoracic radiography remains the gold standard for detecting pulmonary edema. Here's a radiograph of a cat with HCM, but without congestive heart failure. You can see cardiomegaly and left atrial enlargement, but the lung fields are still clear and pulmonary vessels are not distended. When pulmonary infiltrates are observed with cardiomegaly, left atrial enlargement, and distended pulmonary vessels, cardiogenic pulmonary edema can be considered. In this cat with mild pulmonary edema, you can see interstitial infiltrates in the caudal lung fields, which indicate the onset of congestive heart failure. Here, pulmonary edema is more advanced. Diffuse pulmonary infiltrates and increased opacity are seen, especially in the caudal lung fields. In this case, pleural effusion is also present, making the cardiac silhouette less distinct. This indicates severe congestive heart failure. In this case, pleural effusion is more prominent. You can see widened interlobar fissures and retraction of lung lobes, along with pulmonary infiltrates. 
This represents advanced congestive heart failure with significant pleural effusion. Let's wrap up part three with the key points. An LA-AU ratio over 1.6 and reduced LA fractional shortening suggest advanced disease. Spontaneous echo contrast and low LAA flow velocity indicate high thromboembolic risk. Saddle thrombus can be diagnosed by a hyperechoic mass with Doppler flow defect. And finally, pulmonary edema can be evaluated on radiographs. Thanks for watching part three. In the next lecture, we'll review the differential diagnosis, prognostic indicators, and go through a practical checklist for diagnosing feline HCM. I'll see you in the final part of the series. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss it.